It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday with Andrew Brandt. Actually, that we're going to record and post on a Tuesday night. Why not? We're presented by DraftKings. They got a ridiculous college football offer going on. Just use the code ROSS on the DraftKings app. Put a dollar bet on any college football game, and they'll give you $200 in free bets, which is insane. Recording it on a Tuesday night because I've got a bunch of duties tomorrow morning, production meetings and such uh, for the Eagles preseason game on Thursday night. Really looking forward to being back in the booth. Uh, have not done that since January, I guess. So uh, we're back. I'm back in the booth calling games eight months later. Let's do it. Looking forward to it. We will have a spread the word winner, sponsor confirmation email winner, and YouTube shout out winner on Thursday. So I think by now, most of you know how to enter those contests. Go ahead and, you know, do that. Speaking of entering contests, you've heard me talk about fan tracks the past two weeks. You know how much I like the idea that you can customize your own league your way, the way you want to, all for free. For me, that means no defense and no kickers. I think kickers are fine. I think kicking is stupid. All offense, all day. Well, now, just for signing up at fantracks.com slash Ross, you will be eligible to win a Devontae Adams signed jersey. And even better, if you bring your friends and your other leagues from some not-to-be-named platforms, your entire squad will be eligible to win a weekend getaway to your favorite game to watch your favorite team play. Are you kidding me? I'm sure that will come with some arguing, but you'll all get over it because that's part of the package. The winning group gets $6,000 in spending money. Guys, it's totally free, totally customizable, and only at Fantrax.com slash Ross. That's F-A-N-T-R-A-X dot com slash Ross. Fantrax.com slash Ross. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. We talk to him just about every week because he is the best in the world at what he does because he did it for so long, right? He is the host of the Business of Sports podcast. He wrote another column this week that was glorious for the MMQB with some really interesting points about Josh Allen's contract, about Deshaun Watson's status that I might ask him about momentarily. And you can follow him on social media at Andrew Brandt. Speaking of that, Andrew, I've seen a couple tweets about a webinar. What are you doing, a webinar? Yeah, Ross. Yeah, the giving the people what they want. You know, I, you like you, but probably I get more than you. Um, young people wanting to get into the business. Almost a day doesn't go by where I hear about that. And also the idea of sort of me, besides this forum and my podcast, giving a way to sort of share my story and share how to get in the business and share the inner workings of how it really works. So I thought this was a great time with everyone going back to school at all levels, from junior high to high to college, to law school, to business school, to grad school, to just professionals going back to work after the summer break, where I'd share it. And it was an idea to just do a webinar, a tutorial, an instruction, an hour with me. And I've been tweeting out the link, and hopefully we'll tweet it out here. We'll tweet it out in my podcast. And I've got some nice signups going already, but here it is. Tuesday, August 17th, 8 p.m., Andrew Brandt's webinar on the business of football and ways to get in the business. I hope everyone joins, whether you're young or old. It's a unique offering that I'm just starting to do, and I'll, there'll be more down the road, but this is the first one. I love it. Great call, Andrew. Very cool that it's free webinar. People can sign no, up it's for not free. It's not free. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. All right. He's doing a webinar. Well, <laughs> I'll let you tell that portion of it. It's 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 moderately priced, $19.95. So under 20 bucks, you get me for an hour. Um, and yeah, it's my first paid offering. I wanted to give something a little more exclusive for people that really want to dive in deep with my stuff. You know, 
there's value in that, Andrew, because if you pay a little something like that, right, yeah. you're – you know you're serious and you know you're into it as opposed to if it's free it's kind of like go big recruiting you, you pay five dollars per college that you send your video and information to and a lot of people want to just like have a hundred dollar fee where they can send it to every college but the problem is the colleges don't want that right you know they want the colleges like that the kids pay five dollars to send it to them because they know like that kid's legitimately interested, right? I mean, you're not just going to throw $5 away. Like they know that that kid has some sincere interest. Right. Skin in the game. And I'm not making it again. I'm very transparent with the cost. It's under 20 bucks. You know, eventually I'd like to have some more premium offerings where I'll do, you know, more private stuff, but this is kind of an entry into that. Um, I'm not doing Patreon. I'm not doing premium content right now. I just wanted to have an offering, like you said, to show people, you know, that really want some skin in the game and get into it. And here we are a week before Ross. I've got close to 50 signups. I just started tweeting it out yesterday. And maybe we'll get a couple hundred, you know, and these young people or old people, they'll be invested in me and, and I'll give them uh, hopefully more than what they ought, what they paid for. That's awesome, man. I love it. Uh, definitely got some business to get to with you, including, I mean, there's a bunch of places we could go. I guess we'll start with the Josh Allen deal. You know, that's the big money. That's the quarterback. That's sort of the potentially first domino to fall with the quarterbacks in that class. What did you think? Strong deal. Uh, for the player, you know, I look at the key markers as people know the way I judge contracts. Obviously, the big number that everyone focuses on is not what I focus on the 250 or 260 million dollars. I look at the guarantee, which is 100 million at signing, meaning if he falls on his face today, he gets 100 million dollars. And there's 50 million more of what I call functional guarantees as long as he's on the roster in 2022, on the roster in 2023, kicks in another 150. So it's 150 if, if worst case scenarios. I always look at it like that. That's strong. There's also some strength in there in the early cash, just like what I talked about, compared especially to like a Patrick Mahomes first three year cash or even to uh, Deshaun Watson's first three year cash done last September. But here's my butt, Ross. <laughs> it's a win for one of your old teams. I think this is a win for the Bills. And the reason is length. It's the same discussion we had about Mahomes. Now, Mahomes is 12 years. This is eight years. But think about that. Eight years for a 25-year-old, that is buying off his prime of his career. And I keep saying this. The only way players get player empowerment, the only way, is to leverage free agency. There will not be free agency for Josh Allen in this decade. So I just think it's a win for the Bills because it's the market's only going to go up. And I just think like Mahomes, like the Chiefs, the Bills are going to have this property under asset under property for a decade. And I just think, you know, I'm back to Dak Prescott, which is the most recent other big quarterback deal, where he did a four-year deal. And he'll have more bites at the apple. And believe me, you, Ross, Dak Prescott will make a lot more money than those two players over the next 10 years. Interesting. I, I think the next question in my mind is just what does it mean for Lamar Jackson and Baker yeah. Mayfield? I mean, they're in the same draft class. They just saw this guy get his money. Now, I, I personally think Josh Allen has a brighter future than Lamar and Baker, but, you know, those guys – uh, did some really good things last year. They won playoff games. I'm sure they think they deserve what Josh has. And I'm sure they want it now like Josh just got it. Talk to me. Pretend you are, you know, the VP of player finance for the Ravens or the Browns and what Mayfield and Lamar Jackson's agents are saying now that this Josh Allen deal got done. I'm saying if I'm on the team, damn, we should have gone first. <laughs> you know, because – it only goes up. Now, it goes back to what I just talked about for five minutes with you, which is if you're the Browns or the Ravens, that's not so bad if you get them under contract through 2029. So there's the issue. 
Um, if you're Dak Prescott's kind of negotiator, you probably don't want this deal. You know, maybe Lamar Jackson wants a four-year deal, get another bite at the apple. Maybe Baker Mayfield wants a four or five-year deal, get another bite at the apple. But he won't get $100 million guaranteed after signing, and he won't get $150 guaranteed overall. These are the trade-offs in the deal that only nerds like me, I guess, really look at. So my sense is, Ross, what I wrote about in Sports Illustrated is I'm not sure these deals get done. And there's two reasons. One is the team side saying that that, that Allen deal is too strong and I don't know what we're going to do. And we have him under contract for two years. So what? You know, we have the contract year and then we have the team option in the fifth year. One is from the player side because everything I just said, the market only goes up. And if Jackson doesn't or Mayfield doesn't get a deal done, you're going to look at Josh Allen plus whatever percentage next year. So Allen went up from Deshaun Watson, you know, a year ago. I know we're going to talk about Deshaun and other issues, but it's a real dilemma to me. And I sort of posit in my Sports Illustrated article that maybe, maybe they don't get done and maybe the team and the player decide to wait. Um, having said that, I guess my my odds are one of them gets done by the start of the season. So I'll put it at over under at one. We'll see what happens. I think it would go over if Baltimore Cleveland just said, look, we don't think you're as good as Josh Allen. Like We're not giving you as much money as him. Yeah, that's tough. But then, then it's like, what are we doing now? I mean, the deal's done. The, everyone knows the numbers. So – is that what Jackson and Mayfield want? Or do they want shorter deals? Is that what the Ravens and Browns want? Um, this is hard. I know you just, you just laid it out. When I was at the Packers, I basically had agents and players ask that exact question. You don't think I'm as good as that team thinks their guy's as good as? They'll ask that question. And it's tough for a team to answer that. It really is. Speaking of quarterbacks, you referenced it. Got to talk about it. Deshaun Watson back at practice this week after, I, I guess, not a very serious ankle injury. <laughs> but Nick Casario, the GM, says it's unlikely he'll play in this preseason game because of a lack of reps. David Culley, the head coach, was asked about other preseason games and said no comment, which, by the way, is never – they're a good way to go. No comment, always just – no comment, I feel like, is a comment without making a comment. Yeah. You know you know what I mean, Andrew? Like, all he had to say is, you know, we really haven't decided that yet. But when you say no comment, it's like I'm not allowed to say why he's <laughs> not going to play these last couple games. Yeah, I mean, you and I talked about this before. I keep saying it. I just wrote about it in Sports Illustrated. I no way to me, to me as a lawyer looking at precedent, there's no way in God's green earth this guy plays before mid-November. There's no way. I'll say it again. A lawyer on precedent, Ben Roethlisberger, something happened with a woman in a bathroom bar, one woman, no criminal charges, six games. Ezekiel Elliott, something happened with a woman, one woman, no criminal charges, six games. Something has happened with over 20-something women with criminal charges. And Deshaun Watson, how in God's green earth does this guy play? I mean, forget about commissioner exemplist. How, how does he play with that precedent? And I don't know what's different. Ben Roethlisberger had no criminal charges. Ezekiel Elliott, no criminal charges. You can say these women, these massage therapists are making it up. So I don't, I don't get how he plays. Now he's in camp because that's the way the NFL works. Suspensions don't happen until the season, but there's no way they put him out there. <laughs> you know? And then my final point, Ross, is opportunistic teams that want to trade and get a bargain. Good luck selling that to your fan base, right? No matter what the price couple other situations. This Michael Thomas situation in New Orleans is fascinating. Three months, he just didn't – he just ghosted them, didn't return calls, didn't answer calls from trainers, position coaches, 
the head coach, Sean Payton, and he comes back and has the surgery. He posed sort of a vague, ominous tweet. I mean, Andrew, what do you do if the guy just doesn't answer you? I mean, I guess it's the offseason or it doesn't have to, but at what point if a guy has an ankle injury and he's not answering calls from the trainers, is that a finable conduct detrimental offense? Good question. Yeah, I mean, I'm fortunate I never dealt with this. I mean, again, everything like this, my gateway is the agent. I think it's um, – they've done athletes first. I don't, and, and obviously they've had other saints and maybe do have other saints. So I'm like, what's going on there? You know, what's going on with the agent? If you can't reach the player, you reach the agent. And I don't know. I'm, what, what is the agent telling the team? How is that happening? Um, I think what we all know is this doesn't look good between the team and the player. They gave him a big contract, I believe a year ago. Um, I don't know where this ends, Ross. I mean, it just doesn't seem like there's any trust between the two sides. And he's one of the best players in the league at one point. So <laughs> this is curious because, you know, what's going on around the league with Jamal Adams and Dwayne Brown and others, this seems a little different. Those are more contract disputes. This is, this guy's got the contract. So the dispute's more sort of uh, personal against the Saints. Yeah, and what's interesting too, Andrew, is, you know, this is the first year I can remember Dwayne Brown, Jamal Adams, T.J. Watt. These amount of guys that are at camp, but they're either not participating at all or uh, T.J. Watt's not participating in team drills as his contract negotiations go on. I don't remember this before. No, I mean, we talk about hold-ins. We've talked about this for a couple of years back with Jalen Ramsey. Maybe I should have trademarked it. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't the first one to use that language. But anyway, um, yeah, it's weird. I, I think it's because the CBA really strengthened the holdout language. So players are being advised, go in, and then we'll deal with it. Um, but, you know, one thing... With the Watt thing, did you see the comments? I guess it was the D coordinator, Keith Butler, maybe. Um, I was shocked because he was all in on Watt. You know, that's great with me. I understand players got to get his. Players got to do what he's got to do. If I'm management, I don't know. I don't know about that, <laughs> you know, because let's coaches are management, right? Coaches are not labor. Coaches are management. They're supposed to toe the party line. They're not supposed to be antagonistic towards management. So, I mean, Keith Butler's got a lot of cred with the C, uh, with the Steelers, but I was surprised by those comments. Were you surprised that the Dolphins and Xavier Howard were able to work out uh, a new deal that at least keeps them happy for this year? Yeah, I mean, you and I have talked about this before. When we had situations at the Packers, there were three ways to go. One – Tear up the contract, give him a brand new spanking new one with bonuses. Number two, ignore him. Number three, some middle way to get the money that's not what, really what he wants, but you're doing something. That's what the Dolphins did. And what I read about in reports on the Dolphins and Howard was some more workout bonuses, some more per game roster bonuses, making some of next year, you know, a little bit like 600,000 guaranteed, uh, and some more like playtime incentives. To me, that's what I did with some Packers. It's like, yeah, it's kind of a down the middle. You're not really giving them easy money, like bonuses, but you're giving them sort of easy to earn money. So I thought I saw that as a win for the Dolphins because now the player's happy and satisfied and they didn't have to tear up the contract. I am happy and satisfied every single time you come on the show. Check him out on social media at Andrew Brandt. Make sure you sign up for his webinar Tuesday, the 17th, 8 p.m. East time, almost exactly a week from when we're recording this right now. The best $20 you will ever spend. That will be cool. Andrew, thanks so much as always. Thanks, Ross. Always a pleasure. You know what else is a pleasure? Every time I put on native deodorant. You know why? Because Native cares about the products you put 
on your body. They're about stopping the stink the right way. Now, by the way, they have broad spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen. I'm a big sunscreen guy for your face and body. It's lightweight, absorbs quickly, as you might imagine, unscented or coconut or pineapple. The, the key, though, is the deodorant and the body wash. I mean, my wife loves it. She loves the lavender and rose. She loves the coconut and vanilla. And frankly, I just like that she loves it because that's good for me. Stay fresh, stay clean with Native by going to nativedeo.com slash Ross or use promo code Ross at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's Native, D-E-O.com slash Ross or use promo code Ross at checkout for 20% off your first order. Duck Stakes. All right, Ross. Well, uh, let's talk about availability news over the past couple of days, starting with Giants running back Saquon Barkley and Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson, both taking the field for the first time in camp for their respective teams. And Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper just came off the PUP list as well for the Cowboys. That's a good sign because I was starting to get very concerned about that. I think he came off literally while I was talking about it on the Even Money podcast today and why I'm not high on the Cowboys this year. That's huge. I mean, if Amari's ankle's right and he's good to go, that's huge because it sounded dubious to me for a while. As for Saquon Barkley, gosh, I hope he can stay healthy. He's such a fun, exciting, spectacular player. He's such a big piece of what the Giants are trying to do. He's such a great young man. I've interacted with him multiple times. I really hope Saquon can stay healthy. And then for Lamar Jackson, I, I remain perplexed by the guys that are not vaccinated but won't say why they're not vaccinated. I feel like it can only benefit everyone if they comment as to why they're not vaccinated. Because then maybe they make a great point and maybe we need to figure out a better answer for it. Or maybe they make a point that doesn't make sense and experts can refute it for people that might be wondering. But when they just say private, personal, here's the thing. It's really kind of not. Like you're playing a team sport you're missing a lot of action with your team. I mean, he comes back and now Rashad Bateman gets hurt. He's going to miss a few weeks. He might have like no reps with their first round pick wide receiver before the first game as a result of his positive COVID test and Bateman's injury. It's not good. Tux takes. Speaking of returning to practice, as we already mentioned with uh, Andrew, Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson was out with the Texans, but reportedly not going to play uh, for them in week one of the preseason, at least. It's interesting because on the one hand, John McClain, who covers the Texans and has forever, has said Deshaun Watson will never play another down for the Houston Texans. And I'm assuming John's getting that from the Houston organization. On the other hand, there are people that still think the organization is hoping to throw a Hail Mary like they say the Packers do with Aaron Rodgers and somehow convince Watson to play for them. And then you got Andrew, who you heard earlier saying he doesn't think he's, he'll even be eligible to play. I think I've said this like five times this preseason, Brian. This is just a mess. I mean, it's just an absolute mess for everybody involved. And frankly, it's kind of everybody's fault. I mean, it's the Texans' fault for the stuff they did. It's absolutely Deshaun Watson's fault for what he did. It's a mess. Tux takes. So one guy that is going to play in week one of the preseason, Colts quarterback Sam Ellinger, their sixth-round pick out of Texas, getting some reps with their first string in Indianapolis now. Yeah, it sounds like Jacob Eason will still start Saturday night for the Colts, but that Ellinger... We'll get some time with the ones. Not a good look for Eason. 
uh, absolutely speaks well of what Ellinger has come in there and done to this point. But I didn't even think Ellinger was going to get drafted. I mean, a lot of people didn't think he would even get drafted. I, I wonder if the Colts feel like Ellinger's running ability gives them a chance to win a couple games or a game or two before Wentz comes back, gives them a better chance to win than just Easton chucking the rock. Because Ellinger can run pretty uh, a little bit. So I'm going to ask Greg Cosell about Ellinger for sure on Thursday's Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Tuck Stakes. The New Orleans Saints are going to need a new kicker for a while. Will Lutz set to have core muscle surgery, and they may also need a new cornerback. Patrick Robinson retired after 11 seasons. I'm selling the Saints, bro. Bro, I've been selling. I mean, we'll do our final season win totals on the Even Money podcast in a couple weeks. I am not high on the New Orleans Saints at all for all of the reasons that have combined quarterback, now kicker, cornerback. Supposedly they're interested in C.J. Henderson from the Jags. The fact that he's even available for trade is a huge red flag that he must have done or not done something real bad for the Jaguars to even be considering that after the game of $12.5 million signing bonus last year. But it's not good for the Saints at all, what what they've encountered so far already this season. Tuck Stakes. And finally, the NFL poised to strictly enforce all taunting rules this season is one of their points of emphasis. I was on a a preseason broadcast call with the NFL, and they highlighted this. And most people will say no fun league. Most people will say, oh, this is awful. Let them play. This is one where I agree with the NFL and I disagree with those people. And I disagree because I think unlike a lot of them, I see a lot of video of seven-on-seven football, high school football, youth football, and the taunting has gotten out of hand. I mean, Bri, I see stuff in some of these seven-on-seven games where I can assure you I would have immediately punched the kid in the face. I can't, they, they stand over them, they get in their face and they do that because that's what they see the pros do. And I think, I don't really care that the pros do it, but I think it's not good imagery, not a good role model for young. And if that makes me an old guy or get off my yard, whatever, I, I don't care. I'm just telling you, it's not healthy. It's not good. Uh, it's disrespectful. That's not how you're supposed to play play hard, but you don't need to try to embarrass your opponent afterwards. And frankly, it just it would cut down on a lot of fights because I'd be swinging. And I don't care if I get kicked out. You stand over me like that, or you get in my face. Um, I'm hitting you in your mouth as hard as I can, and I don't really care what happens after that. I'm not letting you do that to me. And if that's wrong. And it is probably, I don't care. I don't want to be right. I wouldn't do that to other people. You better not do that to me. Shout outs, Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, HumanHeadNYC.com, and all of you that either want to be part of the DraftKings August Best Ball or the Fantrax.com slash Raw Season Long League, you know what to do. Hit me up with the email, bro. Ross at RossTucker.com. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always, sometimes it does. 
Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 